Boa noite. Boa noite. Acho que já tem nossa audiência nos vendo. Acho que agora estou chegando a câmera aqui. Boa noite. Sou Fernando Nascimento. Eu faço parte aqui do Progesa, que é o núcleo que cuida dos cursos de sustentabilidade, inovação, de empreendedorismo. E hoje a gente tem esse evento especial com o nosso convidado internacional, que é o Nader Asgari, que é da Bentley University, e vai falar um pouquinho aí sobre os impactos de justiça social, mudanças climáticas, desenvolvimento sustentável para a criança, enfim, para os ambientes globais de negócios. A gente tem uma palavra inicial do professor Isaac, que é o coordenador do grupo do Progesa, vai dar boas-vindas para vocês. Estamos em português, a palestra e a fala do professor vai ser em inglês, mas vocês fiquem à vontade para fazer pergunta. Quem souber e quiser fazer pergunta em inglês diretamente no chat, né? tem o Q&A, né? o Q&A, o Q&A, questions and answers, vocês podem fazer em português e a gente traduz aqui se vocês tiverem alguma questão, tá certo? Então, obrigado pela presença de todo mundo aí que está nos assistindo. Passo agora a palavra então, para o professor Isaac Brugliansas, que vai fazer a abertura aqui do evento. Obrigado, boa noite. Ok. Muito obrigado, Fernando, pela abertura. Na verdade, você já fez a abertura. <risos> Eu, na verdade, quero primeiro apresentar o professor Neider. O professor Neider Asgari, ele é professor da PET, ele vai, fazer a, ele vai fazer a palestra de hoje. E eu já o conheço há muito tempo, ele já foi provost da PET, na parte internacional. É um professor bastante reconhecido lá na PET University. E ele já está nos acompanhando nesse programa a pelo menos uns four, five, six years uh, with us in this program. No, I think it's more than like seven, eight, six, seven, seven eight. eight. Yes, I yes. tried, I tried to uh, <laughs> procure <Yeah. laughs> não reconhecer que já passou tanto tempo, né? Eu quero deixar a coisa um pouco mais, um pouco mais curta, né? Mas ele já vai há algum tempo comigo e ele começou, nós tínhamos nesse programa um outro professor que iniciou há 20 anos atrás com conosco esse programa, mas ele faleceu e o professor uh, Neider uh, deu continuidade e é um programa muito bem sucedido. Então, ele vai fazer uma palestra hoje, escolheu um tema bastante uh, atual e bastante importante, né? como o Fernando já antecipou, e acho que vocês vão gostar bastante. So, professor Neider, thank you very much for Uh, generosity to share with us your knowledge, and uh, you can make finish your presentation because I only make a beginning of, so you can say something that is if you feel it is more important. And so the the word is 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 with you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Obrigado. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. And thank you very much, Fernando and Professor I thought of you for your introduction, even though I feel guilty, I did do not speak Portuguese, but I picked up some of the content. It's my fault that I don't speak Portuguese, but I'm listening to CNN and others try to get it. And the aim of this evening presentation basically is when I talk to Professor Isaac, what would be the, a presentation appropriate? for the students, for the audience participant. And the main was, one of it was focusing on big issues, macro issues, which is the first part of the presentation. And then the second part, it's basically focused on the program that it will start on May 30th in Boston. And we'd love to have you guys there. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. And based on past experience, I will share it with you. Uh, previous participant, they truly loved it, enjoyed it, and they made friendship with our student in that group. So to begin the presentation, I do want to say the first part, which I will focus on it, is the broad, when you can see the title of it, it says Global Business Environment. What does it mean? What does it mean what has happened, especially with the COVID-19 impact on 
at least in three areas that we want to focus on social justice, equality of man, woman, minorities, environmental changes, and how does it impact sustainable development in a country like Brazil? But the whole presentation is probably more focused from the perspective of American or some of the data are related to that. But as we proceed, we will try this question and some of it we do not have answers. But these are good areas of research, the study applications for business. Regarding to myself, as uh, if I may go by your first name, Fernando and Isaac, and of course, please go by my first name later as well. It's uh, my first name is Nader, last name is Ascari, and I'm the founder and president of Cyrus Institute of Knowledge, which is in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And its aim has been, since its inception in 2012, uh, three points. We have conferences yearly, which actually we have this year in October in Sao Paulo. And I will share more information with you on the later. We do have journal, which we publish articles. We also have a think tank, which we help young scholars to do what we call it visiting positions in Boston. And of course, we are trying to do publications of books. So that's where you find the reason that I'm the president of it. And also, I've been, um, I have taught in the state of Texas. I have taught in New York for 10 years. And then I've been at MD. As Professor Ittak stated, and actually that's where we started the relationship. I was associate provost for the whole university, and we said Brazil is an important country that we need to build a relationship. And then we got grant, you remember, and through that grant who hands Professor Isaac, we have started a relationship with Brazil, and it has been going on and has expanded. So this is just basically the introduction. And the agenda is, as I said, we want to look at the impact of COVID-19 on the economy, social justice, which has been what has happened in the United States and around the world, and the role of responsible leadership. And that could be president of the country, could be president of companies, it could be any organization that we the case. We want to look at change and sustainable development, which is a, an important issue for development in countries such as Brazil, the majority of the world. But do these COVID-19 basically impacted this and the impact of it in the future as well, which is not certain. I was looking at the data, the data to Brazil, in terms of inflation, it seems to be fairly high. Unemployment rate, which I think Brazil is what, 8.8, which is very high in the spectrum of the percent, right? In the United States, it's a kind of surprising, just to give you a couple of data. Unemployment rate is 3.3 to 3.5%. Inflation is about 7%. And they are not sure how to bring it down. So it's a dilemma, you can see it. Depends upon whether it's developed or developing country. So we want to look at that one, and as we proceed, I will move on some topics a little bit faster, so we need the time. I don't want to get you off. Right. You can see the impact of COVID-19. All of us will be in one form or another. You can see even in this presentation, the number of people who are online before COVID-19, that was in the case, right? Everybody was sitting there. Now, we will not, would like to work at home two, three days a week, a week. And actually efficiency has gone up, isn't it? So you can just see the impact of individual life and that impacted all of the organization around it. And of course, that was the highest since pandemic of 1918, was the highest number of people that we died and we were not prepared for the developed or developing countries. But developed countries, they had the money, they were able to deal with it better. Developed countries, they had more challenges. So you can see the impact on basically 
many businesses in Brazil. My chain, I look at it actually, it's been after I used to come to Brazil almost every year. After, since 2019, this is the first time. And I saw my hotel is packed. Many of these hotels, they went out of business, as you all know. Tourism was just basically devastated around the world, so you can see. It. So COVID-19 has really impacted and then we talked on a big issue for new countries that do not only individual life disrupted. And I will show you the number of people that may die when they got sick, or the number of shots. But organizations basically had to figure out suddenly what to do. And you can look at any one of these. You can, for example, look at the supply chain. A still is not set. Still one of the reasons that inflation is high, that's the case. Because the goods they are not getting in the stores. And that basically increases the cost. And you can see that's one. You can see in terms of production, for example, I will go over a couple of it. If you're looking at the United States trying to do production of the national security and other areas that used to be in Asia, we need to manage. This is becoming more what we call the regions, less globalization. You can easily see that. What happened next is remain to be seen. I'm just looking at a couple of this. You can look at if you had a startup, Microsoft, Apple, they went down the money. You can look at how much we are relying on this system. So it really made drastic changes on every aspect of human life and organization. So we can go through any one of these and we can see the impact of it has been big. You can World Health Organization, you can see it, a uh, number of COVID-19 as, as a glance, and I checked it as of the last update, the 10th of May, 2023, at 10th, 10th, look at the number of confirmed cases. That almost 7 million, and you can look at the vaccination, it's still going on. And it's still at least in the United States is the third largest number uh, or factor that is causing people to die in the United States, which is a very So you can see it's been devastated on human life, families. So that's the case. Please ask questions at any point of that. I really want to make sure it's engaging, but of course, uh, when participants they are not there due to technology changes. It's going to be harder, but please don't hesitate. Either online or here, please ask questions, and I will be delighted to respond. I hope I'm not talking too fast. Is this okay? Is it okay? All right. Here, look at COVID-19 quickly, and you can look at the impact. Now than tourism, minus 70%. Just look at it. And then if you look at it, the whole area has been impacted, including automotive, AI, big data. A lot of these has changed or impacted. And of course, you can see the data work there. Here is COVID-19 and the economy. You can, it says in the last 20 years, April 2020, was the highest unemployment rate. But look at in the United States, unemployment rate, August 2020, 14.5. 7%. In many countries, still is 25 and higher. I mentioned Brazil, it was 8%. 8%. They're still high. It should go to three, at least 3 4 percent now. My right, that seems to become the case. So you can look at how it is. In the case of the US, it has gone, if we extend this one, it has gone to 3.4%, which actually they want to increase and reform of it. They get four percent, but they cannot. So you can see the whole economy changing. Uh, social justice, actually what happened in COVID-19 and George Floyd in the United States, 
make an issue that will not help them in terms of the quad treatment minorities, women's rights, respect, dignity, education. Many people you can see really it did impact significantly that brought social issues or injustice in the society to the surface. And that becomes an issue. I mean, if you look at these, I want to just show you all three of these images. You can look at the other social justice regarding to just now, regarding to uh, basic Black Lives Matter, which previously they couldn't even say it. In Boston, area, when I drive around, I see in many churches, they have a big sign that says Black Lives Matter. Previously, they wouldn't even do that. So you can see that aspect. Get up and stand up for yourself. I do not know if you are following up what's going on in Iran, that they are on the street, they are uprising against the government that did not serve them that. And they even give them equal rights because of the cover that. It has become almost a revolution. So you can expect down the road big changes will be brought in some part of the world, especially I would say in the Middle East, if you're looking at it, because women they are requesting we need to have equal rights in that. And the government doesn't want to do it. And if you follow up and if you can see it, that's the other one. Well, you can see that aspect. Here is another happy girl child, not making a child. You can look at the kids that they are doing that. Of labor. You can see here there are some people that are initiating. In Michael Jordan, two of them, one of Michael Jordan makes a big chunk of it goes to help this kind of This one highlights the role of education for women. Climate change. So I want to switch quickly to climate change, and you can see what's happening. Last year, fire everywhere in Los Angeles, California. This year, we all know what's going on. They have so much water, they don't know what to do. The previously, the lakes of 50 years ago, it was lakes. Now they are built, they have built building on it. Now they are figuring out that the water is coming and taking over. So you can see climate change is. Probably less impacting developed countries, but developing countries are in big crisis. You can look at what's going on in Asia, in Africa. You can look at the migration of a lot of Africans. Usually, Brazil, just look at Brazil migrations. I look at the number of Brazilians that they are, they are hardworking, talented, capable. To be honest, there are two mechanics down the road. But I have always done Brazil. They do my mechanical work and they speak good English. So you can easily see this. Migration is going down on different ways. And so it, in that regard, are they paid well? Probably not. Are they treated equally as that say in America? No. You can look at the number of people these days, actually, in the United States. 1,500 military people on the border of Mexico. First of Mexican communities, Mexican and the other Latin American communities. So you wonder what's going on. And the Biden administration says, if I don't do something, I will lose the extension. This is, internal politics is a big factor. Uh, losses, you can see that. This is the fire last year in uh, California. These are the boats that migrated from basically Turkey. Afghanistan and others trying to really, you can see what's happening in that regard, and there are so many sad stories. And in this one, this migration, if you follow the story of Syria in the past 10 years, how many people half of the population they have migrated? And if you go to Turkey, people that are in Syria, they have PhD. 
and they are doing the cheapest labor. This when I was there three years ago. So, so you can see this issue is a hot topic issue, and that's not going to stop. That's going to continue because of climate change. Element of sustainability. So I'm moving to sustainability, and you can see it. Uh, these are some of the factors, and I'm going to look at a couple of things. Individual and social well-being, all of us. We deserve, we love, we work hard for it, and we would love to have a good quality of life. We can look at that one. We can look at climate change and the impact, which we just talked about it, is an important part of it. We can look at the role of government and pro-social programs, which if you're looking at it, developing countries, government, they cannot do much. But developed, like United States, printed out so much money, you don't know it. Basically, US dollar is the currency of the world. And in that part, case, we are passing what we are using the rest of the world to pay for our bills in some way or shape. So, you can see the element of sustainability. These are some of the key factors that needs to be addressed. These are UN Sustainable Development Goals, which its aim is to achieve these goals for well-being. And some of it has been achieved. Jeffrey Sachs has talked about it, others. But still, we have a long way to go with COVID-19 data here. Globalization and sustainability. Before COVID-19, the trend was that globalization will improve quality of life in developing countries. And they were going to good level. Slowly, it was going down. But after COVID-19, issues that has evolved actually questioning it, whether it's going to go on. You can see the issue of migration. You can look at Brazil if you go around and you can see it. I was looking where is my hotel, and I look at outside. Two people that are living not too far away from it. Just sometimes like look at it like black and white happening. So you can see that. And so of globalization and sustainability is a big issue. If you think about it, these days it has become more regionalized. United States trying to bring the developed and more having countries together. And then you can see, you can see Russia on the other side. Of course, you bring one war, you can see war which is devastating both countries, and there is no good ending to it. And other people, other countries they are involved. So it's really what you find it. I would consider that globalization is the research. Still, it takes some time to figure out what's going to happen. That good. Uh, even regionalization is an important, but we said in that. Globalization process, which is, of course, the basic definition is greater interconnectedness to technology, countries opening, cultural interaction. You can see this is, let's say, a course like what you are doing coming to the United States, or what we've been doing, Professor Isaac, uh, and I've been doing, our aim has been to bring us closer to each other. Begin to understand each other. Try to sympathize with each other. You can see it does create a uh, good connection. Actually, I, before I leave or I left Boston, I had a colleague from China. He was going to go to China and I said, What's going on? Like, oh, he's in like, Dr. Anthony um, Lee. He said, Can you just be careful that you go? Because I'm scared they will pick me up. I said, Do you want to exactly like this kind of work? He says, Good guy. But the China? No. Fortunately, with Brazil, we can do it. And I think he's enjoying the game by both parties. Of course, deepening into dependence. Depending on soybeans from the United States, Brazil, oil from here, many agricultural products that you are So we are becoming interdependent in that regard. And of course, the outcome is economic efficiency. But it's resetting. 
It's not clear in that regard. So that would be the case. So in this sense, I do want to highlight before we go globalization process, now it's in a kind of new setup or re-evaluation. How do we go about what do we do in that? And you can now see, I mentioned that we are, uh, or what I started global environment, but I think we mentioned this out, is tension global environment. You can see it. Tensions that exist, economic integration. You can look at cultural diversity, some culture, foreigners, they are not young. Sad. Unfortunately, that's what you find. You can look at technologically, United States and some of the developing countries, they are really, there is a huge brain drain from developing countries. I think the United States, 25% of new companies that started, started in Silicon Valley, and then one new Cambridge area. It's basically companies are started by foreign. And the question is, why these people do not live in their home? That's a big question. How do you do? Basically, they love their planet. They love their country. They want to stay there. But and the chief part of this is all of coverage, rules, regulations, institutions that protect the right of you as an entrepreneur. If you come up with an idea, it's yours, rather than someone other than the So you can see that's where you find the global environment. It's impacting in every aspect, like the ecosystem. There is a transparent general, general, not perfectly transparent legal system in the United States. That's not necessarily Turkey or in Iran or in Egypt. We don't know who is who. We have to bribe people to get along. So, here is some of the social protection that generally would be good to do it. And that would be oops, child and family benefit, maternity. European, they have it. I don't know if they have it. Uh, is it a maternity leave for someone who works in Brazil for a long? For a man? Or it is for a month. month. Yeah. For months, yes. For months. Is this for both parties? No, that's for a woman. For the woman, okay. So in some other country, now they are doing it both. You could see it in, in uh, the Scandinavian countries. That's what they are doing. So you can see health protection and disability benefit. These are some of the things that we could, we could do it. And employment support, employment benefit. Some of these old age, which I'm getting into it, we need support for it. In that regard. So these are some of the things that as more democratic, open economies, because of their citizens, they demand those, they tend to produce, they tend to create those or support those. This is not necessarily true for many people. Conclusion is, is basically Business enterprises differ immensely in terms of your behavior and geography after COVID-19 and still is evolving, the still is changing. Business models are changing as well. Companies, they need it somewhat, or let's put it this way, uh, a skilled labor, especially a skilled labor, a human on you can demand more. You can say, I don't want to come to the office from eight to five every day. I can do it three days a week. If not, I get another job. So you can see some of these, the, the workers, or especially our skilled workers, not as a skilled workforce, they can demand more joy and happiness. Relation with the stakeholders and key sustainable business function it's companies they are responding to the demand of their stakeholders. And of course, we can see climate change. It's hot topic. Everybody's talking about it, but taking action is hard. The other one, of course, 
at CSR, corporate social responsibility for the people. It's I do, I did finish the first part. Before I go to, I want to show you on this video, which says we need to collaborate with each other. And we do compete, but we need to collaborate. And then we will be uh, both for you and me, or society. Before I go there, because I want to show this in a funny video and finish this piece, uh, any question before I move the floor and proceed? From online or here? Question, comments, thoughts? I like to make a comment that is in my mind. Today, uh, we receive uh, from the United Nations the conclusion that the 145 degrees we you know that was supposed to not reach, we are reaching in 2027. So uh, this is lost. Now we are entering the very dangerous uh, way. This you are talking about climate change, climate, climate yeah. change and everything. It was announced by the United Nations. It is in the TV. I don't know if it's not mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Oh, it's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at why the people they are leaving countries that they are dry. If you look at Asia, I mean, the least, it is hot and the environment is very bad. Some countries they are saying that half of their population they need to move out of their countries. Where do they go? It's a huge question. Look at the Germany several years ago, they got about 800,000 uh, Syrian. The right wing, they grow up in Germany and they are fighting the government. So you can see internally. Great point. So, in that regard, uh, one question. Yes. Was my voice? Yes, in Portuguese, I'm trying to translate. Thinking uh, improvement in the Sustainable eco economy in Latin America. Uh, do you think it would be possible to improve if we have a common currency like Euro in Europe here in Latin America uh, to enhance uh, uh, economy between Brazil and Argentina and other countries here? What do you think about this? I think it's a good, as if they can converge, I think it's a good idea conceptually, but it's a Hard process. Look at Euro. They started in 1916, and they went far. They killed each other, and they said that's enough. And then they started doing creating European Union and then Euro, and it still hasn't been able to compete as much with US dollar. But I think it would be beneficial. At least I can say from the efficiency point of view, definitely it's beneficial without any question. In terms of trade, it would be very beneficial. But the question is, could the governments agree on what would be the way? How do we go about it? Um, just giving you an example, in the Eurozone, if you, are, if you are remember, Greece, several years ago, because being part of the European Union was really was worse off because of Euro. Tourism was dying. And then Germans and others, they, are, they were bailing it out and they were forcing them to do different policies, fiscal policies that would really make the society even more soft. So it's kind of complicated, but I strongly believe it's good to start and hopefully at, at some point they can convert. Just to take this point, yeah. what are your opinion about the Brexit? Because um, it's a movement uh, that you are talking about, uh, they are out of the uh, Eurozone. So what, what's your opinion about that? I think if you look at, maybe I'm on the side of, at least in terms of the EU, I think it was a mistake. But like they can, they still have the mindset that they used to be United Kingdom around the world. They are a small country, 
it has not been, it, it's, it was internal politics. It was immigration policy that from Eastern Europe and others that were coming to UK, they were starting with their companies and the British, especially countryside, not city or urban area, they were against it. I think uh, looking back, it seems that they are not doing well. Actually, if you're looking at it, their inflation is much higher, their economy is worse off, and they are trying to have bigger trade with the United States, while their neighbor, European Union, they were cutting it, reducing it, not food, but reducing it. So I think it was bad internal, uh, basically, political issue, but you could see from the macro topic that we had, it was the migration that was at least the right wing. They used it to argue that's what it should be. Great question. I think it's a good question. Any other question? Well, no, no more questions. I have a question. Sure. Um, I worked for a quite long time uh, for a, an American company. And from time to time, uh, when there was elections, I used to, to ask for, for my colleague, oh, what your candidate? And in general, the, the, the responses in, in that time was kind of, uh, well, no matter of we, which one we win, there's a kind of uh, an America agenda. And the, the Amer America will continue growth, continue running smoothly. It's all. Lately, we, we, we have seen a lot of polarization, a lot of kind of new agendas in the world. Um, do you believe that you support for the future, that this, this, this train is it's in risk to, 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 to agenda, for example, environment, globalization? Uh, what, what's your view for that? It's a great question, and it's evolving or changing, if I may add that keyword. I think. They feel like American democracy, United States democracy, continent, in terms of many aspects, is really uh, a country that everybody can come in grow, sustain. Americans tend to be a kind of, they are leaning back to the system. It's not as much active engagement. No, 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 no. If you're looking at it, uh, Donald Trump, you remember, you never could imagine what happened in the United States. All of us were looking at the screen and they say, who's trying to take over the Congress? So democracies, they are in big challenges for being able to sustain it, it's including your own country. It's an important challenge. And for that reason, active participation of citizens is Having right knowledge, probably the word right is not appropriate, but being informed and knowledgeable about issues. And if they are factual, I think it's important. But at the same time, you can see news media that right now, like in the right wing in the United States, they are putting out lies that you just cannot imagine or believe. I can tell you several examples that they've been sued because of their lives. But social media, in some aspects, is positive, in many aspects, or, and for some aspects, not necessarily positive. So it's very hard, and that's, that's what it is. The way to respond to your question. Okay. Two more questions. I think, I think they are connected. Uh, the first one is in English for, uh, from an anonymous attendee. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, it's what's the critical path to reduce inequalities around the globe? And I think it's connected to that. Elisa is asking in Portuguese, uh, what's the actual likelihood or the real probability of the uh, United Nations Agenda 2030 uh, be followed by its members? Real, the real probability of the if I, first of all, they are very good question. Yeah. Thank you for asking. The well, first one I do see inequalities is one of the, the yes, things. exactly. As I've Both. been teaching and reading, I think the solution for it is really democracies. If you democracies. could set up the rule of law, 
and representative government over time, they can reduce the poor. If you want to go there, look at it. Amartya Sen, economist at Harvard, I think he got his Nobel Prize in 2008 or 18, I think it's 2008. He actually said, in countries that there are democracies, they've been able to, even if there is planning, the government responded appropriately. But if it wasn't democracies, it became disaster. So building the rule of law and democratic system, it takes time, it's complicated, but that's the best solution to do that one. And if you do that one, then you can set up governments, you can set up macroeconomic policy that's targeted for uh, the demand of how do you reduce inequality. That was my response to the first one. Yeah. And the second one was? Uh, What's the, the, the real possibility of the uh, 2030 agenda? Or, you know, I think it's, I don't have a good grasp of the data, but I think it seems, at least in one area, a couple of areas, a lot of young entrepreneurs or those social actors through innovation is trying to do many other things that reduce the negative impact of climate changes and then address the issues regarding to 2030, which would be one important factor. That's what I would like to say. But it seems there's a lot of actors around the world, especially in developed or I would say democratic countries that they are pushing that agenda. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's our goal as an educated people. To really we are going to achieve these great goals. It's very hard. Usually, we aim here when we got here. It seems to be which maybe it's OK. We should aim high. But if we didn't get to really high, we get one level or two level below, I think it's better, better than it was. That would be my response. I hope it makes sense. No more questions for now. So let's so, look at a uh, couple of the uh, videos which became interesting, and then I will get quickly to the other part. Okay, let's see if works. Once upon a time, a turtle and a rabbit had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with a race. The turtle and the rabbit both agreed on a route and started off the race. The rabbit shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Then, seeing he was far ahead of the turtle, he thought he'd sit under a tree for some time and relax before continuing the race. He sat under the tree and soon fell asleep. The turtle, plodding on, overtook him and soon finished the race. Emerging as the undisputed champ, the rabbit woke up and realized that he'd lost the race. The moral of the story is that slow and steady wins the race. This is the version of the story that we've all grown up with. But our version of the story continues. The rabbit was disappointed at losing the race and he did some thinking. He realized that he'd lost the race only because he had been overconfident, careless, and lax. If he had not taken things for granted, there's no way the turtle could have beaten him. So, he challenged the turtle to another race. The turtle agreed. This time, the rabbit went all out and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. The moral of the story? Fast and consistent will always beat the slow and steady. It's good to be slow and steady, but it's better to be fast and reliable. But the story doesn't end here. The turtle did some thinking this time and realized that there's no way he can beat the rabbit in a race the way it was currently formatted. He thought for a while and then challenged the rabbit to another race but on a slightly different route. The rabbit agreed. The turtle and rabbit started off. In keeping with his self-made commitment to be consistently fast, the rabbit took off 
and ran at top speed until he came to a broad river. The finishing line was a couple of kilometers on the other side of the river. The rabbit sat there, wondering what to do. In the meantime, the turtle trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking, and finished the race. The moral of the story? First, identify your core competency, and then change the playing field to suit your core competency. The story still hasn't ended. The turtle and rabbit by this time had become pretty good friends, and they did some thinking together. Both realized that the last race could have been run much better. So, the turtle and rabbit decided to do the last race again, but to run as a team this time. They started off, and this time, the rabbit carried the turtle till the riverbank. There, the turtle took over and swam across with the rabbit on his back. On the opposite bank, the rabbit again carried the turtle, and they reached the finishing line together. Both the turtle and rabbit felt a greater sense of satisfaction than they'd felt earlier. The moral of the story? It's good to be individually brilliant and to have strong core competencies, but Unless you're able to work in a team and harness each other's core competencies, you'll always perform below par because there will always be situations at which you'll do poorly and someone else does well. Teamwork is mainly about situational leadership, letting the person with the relevant core competency for a situation take leadership. And that is the end of the story. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the team work works is really that's occupying uh, what you was explaining itself. All right, there's another one question. Yeah, I forget. Okay, it's Mumbai is asking in English. Environment pollution is critical worldwide. How do you envisage ways to bring it down to conform to lower, less damage. Also, Great question. I think the number one is really us as citizens take responsibility to minimize our damage in terms of consumption. That would be the first part. However, the second part is what already has been done, and that's where innovation is evolving, is coming to minimize that aspect. But at the heart of it is really our individual behavior and consumption and action would be the primary thing that I think is essential. And uh, that would be the first. And the second one is basically through innovations. And I would say the third or probably second important factor is the role of governments allocating resources, focusing on marketing in every aspect that they can, then they can impact that. So joint consumers, government, and innovation, three ways they can have in the mind. That would make sense. I think there are no more questions. All right. So if there is not so, uh, let's move to the second, second one. one. And it will be quicker. Okay. I do want to say it's the focus is for those of you who are coming to Boston and what we are doing. So feel free to ask questions. Yes. Yeah, I think I am going to talk to audience in Portuguese to please, explain that. Please. Pessoal, voltando ao nosso bom e velho português aqui, a gente fez a primeira parte do evento, a primeira primeira parte essa palestra importante que vocês ouviram. Nós vamos agora apresentar o programa internacional que a FIA tem em parceria com a Universidade de Bentley, de onde o professor Asgeri vem. Então, quem quiser saber um pouco mais sobre esse programa, a gente tem um que vai sair agora, dia 30 de maio, né? Quem tiver visto em dia é, é, e tiver condições aí de entrar, as condições realmente são imperdíveis, né? Quem vai é, pode se juntar a nós, mas é um programa que a gente vem fazendo, a gente está na 18ª edição, a gente vem fazendo, então é interessante para vocês saberem uma possibilidade de é, certificação internacional, de participação e vivência, uma imersão completa numa universidade de ponta dos Estados Unidos, então quem quiser saber mais, É sobre isso a nossa segunda parte aqui do evento. Então, fiquem à vontade, participem com a gente. Obrigado. Thank you, Prigot. 
least I can hopefully I pronounce it right. <laughs> uh, so here I do want to just go over the program and briefly explain what's going on, but I'm sure you will have a bunch of questions. And as I proceed, before I go to the, a few slides, please ask questions to make it clear because we want to make it the program truly uh, enlightening, joyful, fun, impactful. First, I do want to say we have, based on what we have, uh, I think we have 11 students from here. Am I right? 11? 12. 12 students. And then we have 11 students from them. So when we go there in a classroom, of course, it's kind of uh, U shape, we will have them be a student and you are sitting together. That's the first one. Everything is going to be in English, but be confident, raise your hand, ask questions. Of course, I do want to say, Bentley, for graduate student, uh, the model is hybrid. I cannot force them to come. But I strongly, I had a meeting with them two weeks ago, and I told them I'm coming here to discuss it with, uh, with you. And uh, they said we tried to come to class. Because most of them, they are working in So that's, so the class will be about 20 to 22, 23. Very nicely said. We just start every day from basically Tuesday at 9 a.m. and we go about 12:30 to 12:45 every day to the lecture. So the lecture here will be the first part. Professor will present PowerPoint, which I will try to share it with you all very soon. I've been working on it through this week, and I hope before I leave on Friday, I will be able to pass a booklet, which provides all the PowerPoint presentation for all the faculty uh, from here, Professor George Weiss, Tatiana Manadova, Isaac Asteri, Jonathan Sales, and myself. It would be about 350 pages, roughly 300 or so. And these are outputs. So you can prepare, go over it. You can print that or you can use it on which is your time. So that gives you the essence of lecture. And then there are what we call it uh, supporting or articles or case studies that different faculty they provide a different. That's a separate. With some faculty, they provide a long list, so they will use one or two in the class. But they want to give you the rest of it in the lecture. And that would become, uh, let's say, after the lecture, there is a project, team project. That they will try to that reading list that they will have you to do it, and then they will come back as a team and present. Next week, I will create teams which is composed of PR students and vendors who try to come back to build a network, you know, becoming friends and work together, which includes cultural understanding, which includes English language communication. The method of a study, so that's what we need to create. You may not be having a perfect number of three, 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 but it would be somewhat that kind of model. That we so we try to bring you guys the two groups together. And it's really the only unique course at Bentley that has this kind of characters. I don't know if you'll have like this here or not, but that's it. So that would be the third part. The first thing is Professor Weiss, which is going to talk about leadership and competency. And that would be from basically, uh, you can see it, 1230, 1245, different faculty. You will take a break in the middle. You will have your breakfast, I should mention, before you come, nine o'clock. And uh, we will talk about that later. we we'll sit it on the side. And then when you come in, you take a break, we have coffee, snack, some fruits in the middle so you don't get tired. And the second part after the lecture is really more free, more relaxed, because we don't want you to sit in the classroom for three hours, just it's not productive. So that would be the first. The first thing in the afternoon, we will go to at, uh, at two o'clock, we will have a bus near the police department that you will get your 
information to go through a room, which is right there, all explaining data. Or we will take a, either a van or a minibus, and then we'll go to this company, which is actually Madison Welch, for both things like, remember, said she was my former student last year. She made uh, senior management to take us to this company, healthcare company. What would they do in terms of healthcare? Yeah. So they would do a presentation for us. I will show you all the image at the end of this slide. That would be the first thing. We will give you a tour, brief tour during lunchtime of the campus so you get what's going on with the campus, especially after. The second, second day would be Tatiana, which we will do, it's more focused on technology and entrepreneurship. She will do the presentations in that regard. And then it would be again, the same time frame. And then I was able actually this afternoon meeting with, we will take you guys to Microsoft. Chat GTP, they will show it to you all. And actually, they had a meeting for me tonight, tomorrow afternoon. I cannot meet. So, seven people that are working on the project, to be honest with you. So, we are supposed to go from there in the afternoon to Cambridge, which is where all of our MIT is. And Microsoft Office is right next to MIT. We'll go there, they will present for us what's going on. So that would be the case. And you can see Mr. Lee is organizing it in that regard with us. And again, we'll go over these in detail. And then the next day, it's my son, of course, you could guess from the last name. He's going to present on the strategy of culture and pricing. He will do the presentation. And then in the afternoon, we'll go to tour of my team and we go to what they call it Cambridge. Innovation Cambridge Innovation Center is from four o'clock for as long as you want to stay. Usually, based on past experience, oh, so these like knows we go there, they give us a tour of the uh, Cambridge Innovation Center. There are 800. These are all the startups. They have a CA. You could basically rent a place. To start your company and have a big office. They will tell us their story about that. And then, of course, there is a, they have a from five, whatever you want to stay. They have drinks, particle, light, and some food to bread. And then they have usually two, three startups, they come in, they do presentation. But today, why is what they have going on? What's the And most of the time that we've done, the student they want to stay over there and then they go eat in Cambridge to stay longer. So we have realized we just take the student and then plus four, and then the bus to leave. And then basically the student is going to stay. You eat the same student. We did a stay every year until six o'clock, six thirty, and then it's a goodbye. And then the student they made their own move, they went to the country. Places for fun for those that come. So that would be the other. And then, so that would be the case. And then we have Jonathan Sid, who is a lawyer and an attorney, very entertaining presenters. He will talk about open innovation model, the strategy and business model. That would be the case. And then we have uh, a speaker online who's from Dr. Alf Wally, has written almost 22 books. I think a colleague of mine is going to present and how do you do research? He's, we are talking about what would you do school, especially your end. So he will do that one. And then we'll do the same for Saturday, which is the last day. I usually put myself the last. If something happened, nobody showed up, I will be there to fill in. Okay, that's where you find it. I will uh, focus on team building, the rabbit story that we just went over there. And on this one, and will have a, another entrepreneur, young person like your son, who has got his degree from Bentley and Tilburg University and just sort of his own company. He will do a very short presentation and we will discuss. So, this will be the plan of the day uh, as we can see. Any question on this before I move on to the other? Yeah, I was I, I bring my laptop. Me and I, I believe that he uh, will be shielded for, for the first part of the, the, the class, and then 
and we need to put them in the room and what were the second part of the business? Okay, that's a good question. I do want to say, yes, please bring your lab. Because it's more efficient rather than paper we were talking about it. Uh, generally, we don't like to be access to them, but just to take it out of the way. Because we can just When we go in the afternoon for the tours, where the bus stop, many van stops, is right next to your door. You just go there, you put up your stuff. That's it. And then you can go in there. That's usually that's it. One other thing that I should have mentioned uh, earlier, we were talking about it. Usually, the way that it does work, I don't know which day you are getting there. They always take an Uber from the airport to the police department of the Police department is at the entrance of that. They will have package for the key for the room for you and other information which is relevant to each of you. And then here is the police department, and your building is well right Just walk, it's right? walking from here to the north. And you get your key, you go there. It's really good, very nice. Generally, we, it's been very nice. So that would be your book. Basically, where the police department is, you go to the other The classroom is further up. You gotta come to the other building on the other side. Which we did talk about it, how we could organize it in that regard uh, to make sure that we go into breakfast, lunch, and uh, basically breakfast, the snacks, and lunch. Uh, we have planned for it. And mostly, I think, for breakfast and lunch, it's in the cafeteria, which is not too far away. It's between uh, the classroom and the door. Uh, for the dinner, it's just your own. And I do want to say, uh, easily with Uber, like five minutes, there are different restaurants, different places that you can do it. And once you did it, you do it. Can I explain travel before studies? I know the detail better than I did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe uh, one of the maps will be in the classroom. Yes. Friday and Saturday, great point. Friday and Saturday, lunch will be in uh, a classroom next to outside of the classroom. The university is closed. So we plan it, they will bring it there for us. And another question he asked me, I didn't know. It's about the academy. Who, who the academy will be open in this period? The, the gym. The gym. Yeah, the gym is open. Certain hours. Okay, we gotta look at what is this. In the cafeteria, she should be off, open. Uh, it's open day. by certain time. Okay, but not can we if we are we have other we are bringing someone else with us. It's they they they, they can. Like, they can room. go. Sure, we can go to cafeteria. Of course, we gotta depend upon how the package is working in terms of that. That's one. The other one, I think, sometimes I've noticed a previous student was in. They really bought some other stuff outside in the in. And and is a refrigerator in your, in your room. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You will have nice refrigerator in your room that you can, and I would recommend after the first day to see what you are like for the film done, and you can find it easy in the not too far away. And you usually can get some information from the police. Of course, on this day, I will. See all of you, I will explain. Hopefully, there is no problem up to that point. I would explain and I would uh, address any concern, any issue that exists in that. Make sense? Any other question? And most of us will arrive at the same amount of day, around the day. So there will be some uh, restrictions in the university. No, to you arrive? No. no. No, as soon as you come, you come to the police department. Always there's the 24 7. Police is there and support the staff there. They have your information. And as soon as I go back, I will. Actually, one of the sergeants used to be my student. I talked to him two weeks ago that we had a reception. I said, My Brazilian student, they are coming. 
So we look forward, we will be happy to help. But of course, it's 24 7. Who's there? It's a question. And of course, uh, they have my phone number. So they, if there's any problem, I can. I thought, you know, I can just tell them if there's any issue. Sure. To my mind, I know that people, uh, those that are renting cars yeah. uh, are plenty of space for parking free. Okay. No problem. Yeah, for parking on campus, no problem. Actually, right behind your uh, building, there's a like, 20 parking you can park, especially if campus is closed. The only concern that I do want to say last year, it did happen, I want to prevent that. Usually parking in Cambridge or Boston is very expensive. I would discourage taking it there. And this, right, so that's one part of it. Or if you are parking in a place, be careful. Either you have to pay for it, or you pay. that's an important thing that it has happened to a student and so on. That's cool. Am I right? This, this was Lucas, I think, with one of the students last year. It happened. It did happen to me as well. I got a ticket parking, trying to run to get to a student. I couldn't. The ticket was a headache for me for a while to figure out what's going on. So that's it. Then you have a question here about COVID-19. COVID uh, there will be some uh, restriction or something that I have to show that I, I get the vaccine here in Brazil, uh, in the border, or in the university. In the university, no. I, as far as because no longer they are in we would have in the classroom, you choose whether you want to mask or not. The campus is not an issue. As far as I know from the airport, for me, when I was coming from going, it wasn't an issue. Okay. I don't know if it is going to be an issue. So we check uh, the, the authorities and it yeah. doesn't their authorities. But I think since the uh, uh, wealth, uh, uh, health, uh, well, health uh, organization uh, withdraw the emergency. I think it's not necessary anymore, but uh, it's prudent to check. <laughs> I think some of these are things really prudent to check. So you don't want to run to a problem like that. By the way, from the airport uh, to the university is about 15 minutes. It's not too far. It depends on what time, especially when you are coming to the weekend. The traffic is yeah, and a, a question. I'll, I'll be traveling to New York, okay. and uh, do you believe that on, on Monday is it's uh, I guess Labor Day is it's, uh, it's a holiday? Do you believe that it should be easier if, if I live if I travel on Monday morning to come to what to come to Boston? Yes, yeah, considering that it, it's a holiday, I honestly don't have a good answer. But usually it's Labor Day. People they move between New York, Boston is better. I would say probably add one hour to our trip because probably there's right. You would need it even in a holiday. Okay. Because so people are traveling back, let's say coming back from Memorial Day to Boston or to New York, and there's traffic. Of course, it depends upon which way. Yeah. I do not know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But add it one or two hours to your uh, you know, five. It's a pleasure place to drive. You really like to be that place. But of course, traffic is wild. That. Any other question? Any question or not? No. Okay. So, uh, 16 people <laughs> with us. So, uh, during the presentation, uh, almost 40 for for attendees. Oh, but now there, there's still uh, 16 people. Good, good. I'm happy that we have 40, and right now 16 is good. So let me move on quickly and then uh, uh, in that room. That was the essential. If you mentioned that they would be uh, together with the American students, did you say? I think I did. Yeah, I, did. Yeah. I think that's the uniqueness. And usually I find, I do want to say every year, I find some of the Americans and you got, and uh, Brazilian students, they become friends and they actually go back and forth. That has been our experience in the past. Here is, I will go quickly over this. Uh, oops, sorry, let me just. These are what I was going to say. MIT too is one hour, we will do it. Cambridge Innovation Center, I shared it with you guys. Plenty University, we did. 
Microsoft I mentioned, and every day I will try to do those uh, plan daily. And you will have that sheet that you saw in this previous one. It will be in the first part of your program. So this is uh, double the case. This, uh, sorry. this page, you will be in the second page of your power. So far, it's going to be as it is. It may change, depends upon, but mostly it will be the same. Hopefully, the will be more. The last one is sometimes you learn to talk about. So let me move on. Um, uh, this is just for your information, the previous student that they have been there. So in 2018, before pandemic, uh, 43 students, 33 men, 15 females, 40 all time, a full timer, number of questions, 63 questions. We did it and then we analyzed it. And these are some of the results. These are the age 16 to 25, five, 26 to 35. You can see it, it was mostly between 26 and uh, 45. That was the students. We had one in this age group before, yes. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was a long application. We gave it to this. Yes, I have them, but so. Anyway, here is the salary. Look at yourself. This is what they said in terms of their salary. Nine, they said 25,000 to 40. Seven, they said 40 to 55. And more than $5,000 per month. So you can see where you are standing. That was the other piece of information. Evaluation, uh, which is question number 25. They said the benefit of being around other international researcher and a student, they give it 4.8 out of 5. So it's cultural interaction was really interesting in that regard. Uh, and this one, question number 23, the administrators supported towards making you feel part of a group, commitment is 4.75. We try to really become to the best of our ability to serve you in that regard. Uh, also, administrative support, you can see is 4.75. Advancing your communication skill in terms of politics. and Portuguese. American students, they don't learn Portuguese, but you improve your English. I can think that I am not learning Portuguese, to be <laughs> honest. And sometimes it's just, uh, I sweat. I should have been that. Uh, building confidence to work with members of other culture, 4.5. So you can see. You don't feel like American, they are unique in that aspect. You can see learning in that regard. The course overall affected on your enthusiasm for international project. Again, you can see both. Yes. Uh, understanding of global teams, 4.48. Understanding of other culture, 4.35 or 55%. Intellectually stimulating, you can see. This is the only course that we have at Emory that five different topics can be teaching. Always there is one faculty which has been part of So the poor student they put up with us somewhat similar to you. But over there you do the comparison. And of course, every student they have to evaluate every faculty separate from the rest. There is information attained from the course 4.39%. And overall, so you can see. 80% of the course has done exceptionally good. The course teaching has met all of the requirements. So you can see overall the response has been fairly good. And the average rating has been between 4.5 to 5, which is max is 5. And uh, given the nationality, actually, you'll find that uh, we haven't tried to figure out the differences with men in men. And does it work? That one, we didn't focus on that. Here it is, these are the other housing which we talked about it. These are the other cost issues, uh, recruitment. And here is, I want to finish it just, this is the last one. This is the place that we went, Allegas Company. You can see these are the students. Professor Isaac was there, I was there. And we had the presentations of the company. This is, again, 
we took a picture outside of it, remember? We did it. This is the CFO of the company was doing the presentation for us. So we're going to have that one. So that's it. And thank you very much. I hope I can go beyond my time. <laughs> Any question, comments? Comments? Is going to be is, is that uh, I didn't, uh, didn't see this uh, survey. Mm -hmm. But it's to because in the answer to it, 47, uh, 47 participants. Yeah. It's an average. Very good, very good. Yeah, and this, you know, this was, I think that was that year. You, you had a large number of students. And then we had Umabe University, they came in, and then I decided to give the survey, which we developed, and then it ended up. Sure. Any question online? No, 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 no questions. Any question here? What's that? If not, thank you all very much. Thank you. Appreciate having me here. I hope it was informative. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at Bentley, and hopefully we will have a joyful one week and now that well. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Claro, pessoal, a pessoa que foi dada, né? E, e... Quem não está no programa ainda, dá tempo. Quem quiser, as próximas edições também, a gente Obrigado. Todo mundo. Muito obrigado a todos. E olha, para aqueles que vão viajar, ainda nós temos previsto uma reunião para completar, se tiver mais alguma coisa, em relação a, essa, em relação a dúvidas uma coisa que venha a surgir. A gente vai fazer uma reunião, acho que daqui uma semana, duas semanas. Uma semana, semana que vem. Tem que ser é. 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 Exatamente. Tá bom, gente. Então, obrigado. Tchau. 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 Tchau.